Welcome to Two Jeffs One. Today I'm going to be discussing the fuel system on the VW Subaru engine conversion. I'll be showing you some other stuff too for multiple designs and techniques. Uh, we're going to start right with the gas tank in the front here and I'm going to walk you through the whole loop, explain the system to you here. Uh, what I have here on the fuel tank is where the fitting comes out on the bottom. Uh, it's only a quarter inch and what I did was underneath that hose and hose clamp there I soldered on a 5 16 OD copper tubing onto that to adapt the hose on so it wouldn't crush the hose down to the quarter inch and be a poor fit. Well, if we come around to the back here you'll see in the rear where the hose comes out the tunnel and up to the fuel pump. The fuel pump that I have in here is for a 1986 fuel injected 4x4 Ford Ranger with a 2.9. And from the other end of your fuel pump, on the other side of that wiring harness loom, goes across and on the other side of the vehicle there's your fuel filter where the fuel line goes into that. Now I'd like to stop here for a minute. Got some stuff on the bench here I'd like to show you folks. This is what that pump actually looks like. It's a little easier to see on this device. When the fuel pumps go bad that are in the tank of a car, uh, that's actually what this is for. It's a little fuel caddy that I made years ago. Now, why I have this out, unless you're doing this for a living, you're not going to go buy one of these. But, the tip is, a lot of parts houses stock this kit and will sacrifice parts out of it and refill the bins for if you want to uh, lay together a fuel system like I'm going to show you here. If you want to use rubber hose, uh, this is your part number from Gates. Uh, 10 feet come in this box, 5 16 inside diameter. Uh, these are the hose clamps I use. They're not your regular ones. They're a full circle. Uh, they're real good for fuel injection stuff where it don't start to shred on the hose like the regular clamps do. Now these fittings were originally designed for using the nylon line. Uh, if you got some, if you want, instead of using the hose, you can use nylon line too for your system. Just heat the nylon line up real good in some warm water, and you can actually get them on here uh, without any special tools if you got them good and warm. But if you want to use these connectors for a rubber hose, they got some real sharp barbs on here. Uh, what I usually do is take some 220 sandpaper, scuff them down, keep working them until you get the sharp edge off, and then put your hose on. Now what's nice is if you use a fuel filter like this, it's the same style as your fitting on the end of your pump. Uh, so you can use keep everything standard, uh, same fitting goes on these. But to do it the easy way, here's your part number, and you can uh, have even your parts guy cross it over if you're going to a different store. These are the fittings here that I used for that. Uh, there's two different types on each one though. That's a thumb release and that you'd need a screwdriver to release. They do come in a two pack. That's the part numbers. Wanted to help you out with that. A real good source for looking at all this stuff. You can go right on Dorman's website. Very nice pictures and dimensions of everything. Okay, now to mount your fuel filter. I'll give you a neat little tip here. Uh, what you do is get a chunk of exhaust tubing and cut it in half. You're in here, you got your C. Uh, if you got too small of a tube like this would be, spread it open a little more. Uh, then what you do, get a flat plate like this and take your cutoff wheel or grinder, eh, cut maybe like so out of it, make it about halfway through on that. Uh, drill a couple holes on the end. And then what you do is take your tube and your hose clamp. Now you only got now half of a collar here. So then you, your hose clamp will fit through there. Weld your tube on to this plate. And now you have a way to mount your fuel filter. And of course, in case you didn't catch it, uh, I have the cushion clip box out. I like the vinyl clips myself for the ones that I prefer. Uh, I get these from Avico. And there's your part numbers. You're going to get multiple in a box, but I don't know if you caught that or not, but anyway, that's what I use for mounting my pump. Now, if you want your pump on your vehicle isolated so you, it dampens the sound of the pump running, I don't know if you caught on a dune buggy, 
but uh, there's a blanket around it and then you put your cushion clip around it and you'll never hear it inside your car or vehicle and it'll be real quiet. And this is a neat little kit here from Avico. So you ain't got to keep running to the store. Uh, they got a regular buffet of different clips uh, for mounting, brake lines, fuel lines, whatever. A lot of times too, if you want a clip that opens, I'll cut these right through here and then you can actually make two clips out of one larger one and if you want to service something you can open it back up then. I don't think we're going to see gas at this price again ever. That's why I stock a lot of these kits. It can save you some time and of course gas and money. You also get these nice grommet kits fairly reasonable nowadays where this is a narrow slit grommet and the wide slit depending on what you're putting it in. And one last quick thing for you to know about if you're putting wiring harnesses or hoses and stuff through things, this stuff works pretty good too. You can. Well, I hope I didn't bore you too much with that. Let's get back to the fuel system here. And here we have a fuel filter, and you can see the little mount that I made there. And this line here on the fuel filter, this comes up, and we go up into the engine compartment, and it goes to the fuel rail. Uh, the return line comes back and goes underneath. That's where the return line goes in and back up to the front. For the fuel return line where it goes into the tank, I kind of cheated this one a little bit. To get the fuel tank out of this, you got to pull the hood, windshield, there's quite a bit to it. So uh, I had kind of a nifty little shortcut here for that. I'll have to show you this. Make sure you drain the gas if you're going to try this. The fuel return on a fuel injection system can never be plugged. You must install a return on every system. But what I did was I sanded off all the paint uh, right in this area here. And you center punch your mark and you drill a 21 64th hole in the tank. And I took the eighth inch pipe tap and ran it in only Oh, maybe five turns so you can have a pretty good gap right up here yet is what you want. Uh, and then I screwed in your eighth inch pipe 90 degree with a 516 cent. I have a real high powered soldering station for doing circuit board work and actually this is what I used for soldering that fitting on the tank. You could probably use a regular Weller soldering gun too. Just to have everything real clean is the big thing. Yeah, it kind of almost worked like a TIG welder with that to go around and heat that up. Uh, and then when you get all done, put a little primer, a little dab of paint on there and call it a day. Well, I hope this video gives you some more ideas for your project. And if you did like the video, click the like button. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Don't you just wish